So ByteDance has introduced a new model, and yeah, I know, it's a new model every week, but this one, called Bindweave, is worth paying attention to. Why? Because it's claiming to finally nail multi-subject consistency, and it's got the numbers to back it up, at least on paper. It just hit the number one spot on the Open S2V benchmark with a 57.61% score. That just beats Vase 14B and clearly tops Phantom 14B, Kling, and Pika. The scores are close, so today we're going to be the judge. Let's dive into these examples and see if the quality really matches the hype. First, let's dive into the single subject generations, and I mean really look at them. They took a simple headshot of Leonardo DiCaprio, prompted him in a snowy park with a specific outfit, and asked for a thumbs up. The result is honestly really good. The face is spot on, the outfit matches the prompt, and the snowy background is all there. This is a very good and quite impressive generation. Here's another. A headshot that looks like the French president, but the prompt puts him in front of an American flag and has him speaking. Again, the consistency is solid. I can see he's speaking and looking at the camera. I might see a tiny flicker, a very minor issue in the eyes, but overall it's captured him really well while following the new context. This next one is just amazing. A headshot of a young man is turned into the scene of him as a podcaster, complete with red headphones, a green shirt, and a mic. The facial similarity here is incredible, almost a perfect replication. It's not just static shots either. Here's a female headshot prompted into a jogging scene. The prompt asked for a peaceful atmosphere, shimmering water, and a soft morning glow. And the video delivers. She's jogging, wearing the right outfit, and the background with the lake and trees feels just right. It doesn't quite have a bright sun glow, but it certainly feels like morning. This result is also quite impressive. But look at this one. A headshot of a girl, and she's prompted to be smelling white flowers. It's a very lovely scene, and frankly, I can't find any flaws in this generation. It's fantastic. Then, for a real test, they used a headshot of a small baby. The prompt? To put him in a retail store, holding a pink shirt on a hanger like he's doing a marketing presentation. It's a wild prompt, but check the facial similarity. It's remarkable how perfectly similar the face is. Now for a really interesting one. They took a headshot of this woman with black hair. The prompt, however, specified blonde hair, along with a blue top, a necklace, and a store setting. The model nailed it. The output video shows the same face, but with the prompted blonde hair. It even intelligently added a small microphone clip to her shirt for the review segment, even though the mic wasn't in the prompt. That's a great sign of its reasoning. It also seems to handle really complex artistic prompts. This one has a girl in a scarf with falling leaves prompted around her, and her eyes are described as sparkling. And the result matches the prompt exactly. Or this one, a woman in exquisite hybrid armor with gently falling cherry blossoms and even a breeze catches a loose strand of her hair. The fact that it can generate all those specific details and keep the face consistent is really high quality stuff. Okay, here's an Asian female at a cafe from a headshot. The prompt is super detailed. Sitting at a terrace, cup of tea, hair in a bun, steam rising, and a bustling city background with cars and people. The output is almost perfect. The only thing missing is the small plate of pastries from the prompt, but everything else, the steam, the bun, the background, it's all there. And the facial similarity is perfectly identical, a superb generation, but it's not foolproof. They tried one with Sam Altman in a park. The result is good, but it's not perfect. It's a pleasant scene, he's holding a book, the atmosphere is right, but while there's a strong similarity, I can see minor differences. It looks like someone who just looks like Sam Altman, not exactly him. And then this one of an old man smelling a bouquet is right back to high fidelity. The facial similarity here is very high, a very impressive generation. All right, but single subject is one thing. Multi-subject is where most models completely fall apart. Let's start with this hospital scene. They took headshots of a young woman and an old lady and put them in a hospital background. The facial similarity for both subjects is really impressive. This next one is even more complex. Three women, all from separate headshots, prompted to be dancing happily with gifts. This is a very complex scene, and honestly, it's a good generation. You can see some slight issues where the faces aren't identical to the source, which is expected. The more complex the prompt, the more you see these little flaws, but it's holding together way better than most. Here's one with a male and female headshot prompted to be taking a selfie, 
and the result is a very, very impressive generation. They both look happy, they're looking at the phone, it just works. But then let's look for the classic AI flaws. This one has a couple on a sofa with a laptop. It's an impressive generation, but the facial similarity isn't quite exact. Then a similar prompt with a tablet. Watch closely. The woman is holding the man's hand, but a third separate hand is holding the tablet. Yep, the classic AI hand problem. You'll also notice the man's beard is much longer and darker than in the reference image. This is a great example that while it's good, it's not perfect. Then there's this dance video, which is also a very complex prompt. Headshots of a male and a female are provided with details on their dresses. In the output, they are dancing. And while the generation is pretty good, you can definitely spot some of those classic AI issues with the limbs, especially when their hands are clapping or waving. So it's good, but you'll still see those minor glitches. Now here's a key sight I noticed. When the input is a full body or half body shot, the results get much better. Look at the skiing video. The inputs were full body shots of the girl and boy, and the outfits in the video are the exact same. The background is identical. It's a good generation. This is backed up by this painting scene. A headshot of a boy and girl, and the facial similarity here is much better. And in this scene with a couple, using half body shots, the similarity is again, very good. This one with the crying woman is also from half body shots, and it's a very good generation, capturing the depressed and troubled emotion from the prompt. Finally, what about humans and objects? This human to entity to video is a great test. They gave it a man's headshot, a dog's photo, and a house background. The prompt was simple. A man is playing with his dog in front of the house. And the result is fantastic. It's the same man, the same dog, and the same house. Or this one, a boy and American football in a beach. The prompt is, a man is playing with an American football on the beach. And the output is super energetic, looks almost realistic, and keeps all three elements consistent. Next, we have a generation with a girl's headshot, a book, and a bridge background. The prompt is, a woman reads a book on a bridge. In the video, she's on the bridge, holding the book, and you can even see leaves flying around. The facial similarity is more or less close, but here's a weird detail. Her hair in the video is much fuller than in the original headshot. So it's not an exact match, but it's close. They tried one with Angelina Jolie, a Nike vest, and a bridge. The facial similarity just isn't there, and for some reason it added flying leaves that weren't in the prompt. Then, this one of a man in a park with a cat, which used a half-body shot, has very good and similar facial similarity. But then, they tried one with Elon Musk, a cat, and an office. The final video has a man who, well, kind of looks like Elon, but not really. The face just isn't right, and the background is all different. It seems to struggle with certain well-known faces. So, after seeing all those examples, the big question is, how does it work? Especially, how does it get that consistency right when so many others fail? I dug into the research paper, and the secret is actually pretty brilliant. Most older models have what the paper calls a shallow fusion problem. They use one encoder to understand the text prompt and a separate one to understand the reference images, and then they just smash those features together at the end. This works for simple stuff, but for complex prompts, the model gets confused. It doesn't know which part of the prompt applies to which subject, leading to identity confusion or attribute blending, like getting the beard wrong or that extra hand. Bindweave fixes this by using a big multimodal large language model, or MMLM, as an intelligent instruction parser before the video is even made. Instead of feeding the text and images separately, it creates one single interleaved sequence, like text prompt, then image one, then more text, then image two, and feeds all of it into the MMLM at once. This lets the MMLM, they use QN 2.5 VL, do a deep cross-modal reasoning pass. It figures out the complex relationships, the who is doing what, and the spatial logic first. It then generates a set of hidden states that essentially bind the text commands to the specific visual subjects. This MMLM-powered guide, along with other conditions like clip features for identity and VAE features for fine-grained details, is then fed into the main diffusion transformer. So the diffusion model isn't just guessing, it's getting a super detailed pre-reasoned plan. And now for the best part. This isn't just a paper. The team has released the code, the 14 billion parameter model checkpoints, and even the training code on GitHub and Hugging Face. It has an Apache 2.0 license, so you know the community is going to go wild with this. Now, a heads up. The full download for all the files is about 65 gigabytes. 
They don't officially state the VRAM requirements, but for a 14B model, I'm guessing you'll need at least a 24GB card like an RTX 4090 to run this locally, but I'm sure we'll see quantized and distilled versions popping up very soon. All the links to the paper, the code, and everything else are down in the description. Check them out, tell me what you think in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.